Someone, someone uh, find Billy Joel Bible. We're at uh, Micah chapter 7. I thought KK had had me one set. Micah chapter 7. I thought KK had had me one set nowhere. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, we used to have one now. Someone must have moved it. Micah 7. What page is it all in the, in the, in the Pew Bible? 894. 894? 10. 1,000, Okay. Woe, to, woe is me, for I am as when they have gathered the summer fruits, as the great gleanings of the vintage. There is no cluster to eat. My soul desired the first ripe fruit. Verse 2, chapter 7, Micah. The good man is perished out of the earth, and there is none upright among men. Kind of the same way today as it was then. You know, history just repeats itself. We've had the same problems all through history. Uh, they all lie and wait for blood. They hunt every man his brother with a net, trying to catch him. That they may do evil with both hands earnestly. Not just with one hand, they want to cause trouble with both hands, wicked people. The prince asketh, and the judge asketh for a reward. And the great man, he othereth his mischievous desire. So they wrap at it up. The best of them is as a briar. The most upright is sharper than a thorn hedge. The day of the watchman and the visitation cometh. Now shall be their perplexity. Trust ye not in a friend. How many of you, how many of you like me, uh, you, you put your hope in what you thought was a good friend and they let you down? Never happened to you? I've I, I done worse. I had... I had a person, you know, I had, I've had friends, I'm an old man, but in my history of my life, I've had people that I really thought were friends, and it, it isn't only that they let me down, it was that they, they turned on me. That's a terrible thing when you think someone's your friend and you trust them, and then they turn on you and lie about you. Anybody ever have that happen to you in your life? I, I've had it happen. Now, it's sad, and I've forgiven them. I ain't got... I'm not, I haven't got against anything against any. Some are still alive, some are dead. And I got nothing against them, and, and uh, uh, I feel sorry for them, and uh, I'm not glad they died, and I didn't wish death upon them, and I don't wish no bad for nobody, okay? But it happens. That's why I trust you not in a friend. Who are you supposed to trust in? God alone. God alone. Listen to this. Can you imagine something like that? I can't imagine this. But in the, the psalmist said, 28, uh, If thy mother and thy father forsake thee. Now some, some people their mother and father have forsaken. I, don't, I could give you names of people uh, that, their, that their mama turned out little children and never took care of them. That's forsaken them. That's happened often. Yeah. I could tell you some people close to me right now, I ain't going to give the names or nothing, I don't want to talk about it, but where their mother had forsaken them. You know, you can, Father, there's nothing closer than a mother, you know, oh. the mother. Amen. That's the closest. And uh, trust ye not in a friend. Uh, put ye not confidence in a, in a guide. Keep the doors of thy mouth from her that lieth in thy bosom. For the son dishonoreth the father. The daughter raises up against her mother. How many times you see children turn against their parents, huh? Now they're turning against my parents. Some do. Some do. The daughter-in-law against the mother-in-law. We know all about the daughter-in-law and the mother-in-law, don't we? <laughs> That's a... <laughs> That's an ongoing uh, joke, isn't it, about the mother-in-law and the daughter-in-law? <laughs> you know why that is. 
because uh, you know mama she she with her her little Johnny boy or Billy boy or whatever his name is and it, <laughs> uh, here comes this pretty little thing to snatch him away from mama <laughs> That's what a lot of mothers think. They ought to think that way, you know. Because you know what the Bible says. You know what the Bible says. It says you should leave your father and mother and be with your husband and wife. You, you, there, there, there's a time when you grow up and you go on. You understand? Yeah. A man's enemies are the men of his own house. Isn't that sad when people, blood relatives, would be your enemies? It happens often. That's sad. sad. I, I hope it doesn't happen to you. I hope it doesn't happen to me. But sometimes even our foes can be of our own household. Verse 7. Therefore I will look unto the Lord. <laughs> there you go. Remember I said about the psalmist, though thy mother and thy father forsake thee, the Lord will take you up. Oh, isn't that a great thought? I will look unto the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. Are you saved? Amen. You see, if you're saved, then you got a God of salvation, everything's going to be okay. Yes. If you ain't been saved, you're on your own. And when your mom and daddy, hopefully my mom and daddy never forsook me. I had great, they're both dead now, but they're, I had a wonderful mom and daddy. Grandma and grandpa too, both both sides. But uh, uh, my God will hear me. Well, glory. Yeah, amen. Rejoice not against me, oh my enemy. You ain't got enemies you think they're trying to do you in. I wouldn't worry about it. God, if God be for us, who gonna be against us, huh? When I fall, I shall arise. You know, the Bible says a righteous man falls seven times and, and raise up again. It means someone beat you down, God will raise you up, amen, if you look to God, amen. amen. I've seen that often. Mm -hmm. You get as old as I am, you, you see that happen. It just happened for me. When I fall, I shall arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be the light unto me. Well, glory, I could be sitting in Amen. darkness. And Amen. here comes, remember that little old song? Shine, Jesus, shine. Amen. <laughs> when you're in darkness, look to the Savior. Amen. Look to the Heavenly Father. Yes. Shine, Jesus, shine. I will bear the indignation of the Lord because I have sinned against him. Now, how many of you, you know you're a sinner, but you got saved? How many of you have been like that here? I'm a sinner, I got saved. But how many of you sinned after you got saved like me? You see? But you know, then we can still look to the Lord, can't we? Amen. That's what this number seven, uh, Micah, is all about. And, and we're getting to the end of it. Oh, I can't wait to get to the last three verses. They're wonderful. <laughs> I will bear the indignation of the Lord coming down on us because I have sinned against him. Don't, don't you be griping and complaining because God gets after you. Why does God get after us as his children? Why? Because of our sin. Amen. Amen. Until he plead my cause and execute judgment for me, he will bring me forth to the light, and I shall behold his righteousness. Amen. Then she that is mine enemy shall see it, and shame shall cover her, which saith unto me, Where is the Lord thy God? Mine eye shall behold her. Now shall she be trodden down as the mire of the streets in the day that thy walls are to be built. In that day shall the decree be far removed. In that day also he shall come even to thee from Assyria and from the fortified cities and from the fortress even to the river. 
and from sea to sea and from mountain to mountain. Notwithstanding, the land shall be desolate because of them that dwell therein, as they're sinners, for the fruit of their doings. is because they've done wrong, and so it's going to be a desolate city. You understand? We bring unto ourselves what? Destruction. Yes. Why do we bring ourselves destruction? Because of sin. Yeah. Feed thy people with thy rod, the flock of thine heritage, which dwell solitarily in the wood, in the midst of Carmel. Let them feed in Bashan and Gilead, as in the days of old. You know that song, that in the, there's a balm in Gilead that can heal us, amen? A balm, some healing, amen? Yeah. My, my mother used to love that song. There is a balm in Gilead. You know that song? No, I don't know that one. Oh, it's a beautiful song. Might be in the hymnal. Someone find it in the hymnal for me. Tell me what page it's on. There is a balm in Gilead. I want to look at the words of that. Find it for me. Yeah, find it, KK. There is a balm in Gilead. I want to read them words. Find it for me. Uh -huh. Feed thy people uh, the fruit of their doings. Feed thy people with a rod, the flock of thine heritage, which dwell solitarily in the wood in the midst of Carmel. Let them feed in Be and Gilead as the days of old. Verse 15. According to the days of the coming out of the land of Egypt. Now, I remember when the, remember when Israel came out of Egypt? Yeah. Remember what happened? Remember the plagues? Yeah. They had it rough in Egypt, didn't they? Oh, man. Yeah. Uh, who came and delivered them out of Egypt? You remember who? Oh. Moses. Moses. Yeah, Moses. He was the, he was the deliverer. And he came back there, and uh, he did mighty miracles, and God brought plagues upon Egypt. Yeah. And he was delivered, and uh, the Red Sea parted. What, what, what was the last plague, do you remember? Um, the yeah. killing of the firstborn. Uh -huh. The Passover. Yeah, the Passover one day. Yeah, the killing of the firstborn. They had to put that blood over the lintel. Yeah, if, the now if, you're God, if you believed in God, you put... You, you slay a lamb or a turtle dove if he was poor. And you put the blood on the side of the door and up on top of the door. And then the death angel come over. That. And if you had the blood applied, showing the blood of Jesus, uh, then your firstborn wouldn't be killed because you were, the Passover lamb was slain. Amen. Signifying who? Jesus Christ. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Coming out will I show unto him marvelous things. You know who the new you know what it says in Hebrews who's our Passover? Jesus. It says Jesus is our Passover. Well glory. The nations shall see and be confounded at all their might. They shall lay their hand upon their mouth, and their ears shall be deaf. They'll be shocked. They'll go like that. Put their hand. <laughs> that's all you can do when you get caught for your sin. Amen. Yeah, that's right. Whoops. <laughs> they shall lick the dust like a serpent. Like the devil. Lick the dust like the devil. The devil had to crawl around his stomach. Huh? Like a snake. Okay. They shall move out of their holes like worms of the earth. Yes. They shall be afraid of the Lord our God. The dirty snake devil and dirty wicked people that crawl on their belly and lick the sand. Amen. Yes. Like the dirty serpent, Satan. Yes. They shall fear because of thee. Verse 18. Who is a God like unto thee? Just talk about the real God. Amen. That pardoneth iniquity. She's the only one that can forgive sin. That's the Heavenly Father. There's only one way that He'll forgive you sin is if you can, you can only get to the Father through the Son. Jesus saith, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. 
I was talking to someone yesterday, a Buddhist. Can't come through Buddha. Can't come through uh, Muhammad. You can't come through Moroni. Uh, who's Moroni? Anybody know who Moroni was? Moroni, that's the Mormons. Yeah. Moroni Baloney. Yeah, Moroni Baloney. He come down with the Book of Mormon, some angel come down, a bunch of baloney. Boy, they're, they're the height of religion. You know, i seen uh, on the television Christmas music, and they had that they had that great Mormon tabernacle. You know where that is? Salt Lake City, Utah. Utah is about run by Mormons, you know. Yeah, and, and uh, they got a big, beautiful cathedral there. Have you ever heard of the Mormon Tabernacle Choir? Yes. That's a big cult. They follow Moroni, Moroni Baloney. And there are a lot of them big. Uh, uh, who's that politician that's a big Mormon? Uh, Romney. Romney's a Mormon. And, and there's others too. And, and uh, They're very cultured people. They don't run no rescue missions. <laughs> Who is a God like unto thee that pardoneth iniquity? Only the Heavenly Father through Amen. Jesus Christ. Amen. And passes by the transgression of the remnant of his heritage. He retaineth not his anger forever. I'm just glad God ain't always mad. You know when he quits getting mad? Huh? When you repent. When I repent. Amen. Amen. He stay mad if you don't repent. Yeah? You haven't repented yet? God's mad at you. You're going to go to hell. He retaineth not his anger forever if you repent, because he delighteth in mercy. You see, God wants to be merciful. You know who shuns God's mercy? Wicked sinners that won't repent. Amen? Amen. Yeah, yeah. He delighteth in mercy. Verse 19. Come in the end of Micah, end of chapter 7, in the end of the book, little book, seven chapters. He will turn again. says he will, then again, he will have compassion on us. Woo-hoo! <laughs> he will subdue our iniquities, that sins, and they will cast all their sins into the depths of the sea. Remember that song, Billy Joe? Buried in the deepest sea. Yes, that's good enough for me. Amen. You remember that song? Gone, 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 gone. Yes, my sins are gone. Buried in the deepest sea. Yes, that's good enough for me. Oh, glory. How many of you got your sins buried in the deepest sea? Amen, I have. I do. I went to the Science and Industry Museum in Chicago, it's like two blocks. It's a great, you can't see it in the day. You got to go several days to go through. Any of you ever been to the Science and Industry Museum in Chicago? It's a one of a kind. It's got a submarine inside there. And, and, and down there where the Navy stuff is, they show the depths of the sea. You know, the sea is thousands of feet deep, depending upon where you are. And in the deepest sea, did you know that there's critters down there that that live down in the deepest sea that God hath made? They don't ever come up. They ain't even got eyes. They can't see because ain't nothing to see down there. <laughs> <laughs> and some of them can come up thousands of feet and their, their, their internal uh, pressure of their body changes as they come up. Now, we were made, we weren't made to live in the water. You take you or I and jam you down there a little ways down in the, in, in the sea, uh, you, you, it'll mess you up. You, 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 can't, you ain't got the body pressure to live down there. No. But these critters, these fish and stuff, they can come up thousands of feet. And they come, they come slowly, and then they change. Their whole body insides change. Talk about a God that's, isn't that a marvelous God? <laughs> he will turn again. 
He'll have compassion upon us. He will subdue our iniquities. And thou wilt cast all of their sins into the depths of the sea. Verse 20. Last, last verse. Look here. Thou wilt perform the truth to Jacob and the mercy to Abraham, which thou hast sworn unto our fathers from the days of old. You see, uh, do you know who, uh, how many of you know who Abraham is? Yeah. Remember Abraham? Yeah. Abraham is actually the father of faith. In, in, in uh, Romans 4 that uh, Paul wrote, it said Abraham, Ab uh, Romans 4, 4, Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Right. You see, Abraham, he was a father of the Jews and he was a father of faith, but he was the father of grace, you understand, and forgiveness. Abraham was. Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. And then in Romans 4, 5, you know what it says? It says, to him, or her, mankind, that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, their faith, faith shall be counted for righteousness. The Bible says that Abraham believed in Jesus Christ, and he was saved the same way you and I are, by faith. you understand that? Yeah. Ain't nobody ever been saved by works. Now, Abraham, was he before the law or after the law? Huh? I'll make you think a little bit. Was Abraham before the law? He's before the law. Moses came after Abraham. Yeah. Abraham, father of faith. Sworn on our fathers upon the days of old. The mercy to Abraham. Mercy. I'm glad for mercy. Amen. How come we bring judgment on everybody instead of giving people mercy? I love God's mercy, don't you? Why are you so hard on folks? I'm talking to someone. Well, I talk to someone almost regularly. They got people they can't forgive. You got anybody you can't forgive? Let me tell you something. If you won't forgive others, God won't forgive you. That's, right. That's what the Bible says. Got something against someone? You better you better get over it. You don't get over your sin and forgive someone, God won't forgive you. Jerry Pitcher. Nice lady, soul winner, had a nice family. I preached a sermon on that once out of Matthew, and she's part of my church there in, in Milwaukee. And uh Pastor, I can't forgive someone. I don't even tell them who it is or what they did. I don't care. She said, I can't forgive them. Yes, you can, because the Heavenly Father said, uh, Jesus said, if you won't forgive them, my Heavenly Father won't forgive you. Amen. But he know, yes, he does know, and you got to forgive him. And she wouldn't. I don't know if she ever did. She never told me she did. I don't know. She had a nice family, and she used to bring people to Jesus, bring them to church. They got a lot of people saved. She had a bad spirit about it. What's that name that comes up for you that you just, you hate them, you hate them. Don't, you can't do that. You got someone you, anybody here got someone you got to forgive? Okay. All right, you better do it. You better do it. You got to do it, Jenny. You got to do it. You got to do it. Think of God's mercy. Think of God's kindness. Think about God's forgiveness. We must. Forgive. Jesus Christ said, if you won't forgive others, my Heavenly Father won't forgive you. Just think about that. That ain't Varga talking. That's God talking. Amen. Huh? Amen. I'm, I'm just the one that tells the story. Amen. I'm, 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 just a, I'm just a channel that brings you the Bible. That's all I am, bringing you the Bible. I can't get over what we did. Remember Jonah, I preached on Jonah. When I preached on Sunday, I preached on Jonah. You listen to my sermon on Sunday. You got to listen to it. Jonah, he was such a sorry preacher. He didn't want to preach because 
He knew God was merciful and forgiving, and he knew if he preached to people to get saved, he didn't want them to get saved. Can you imagine a preacher, an evangelist, who didn't want people to get saved? What did Jonah do? Anybody remember from Sunday? He ran from God, didn't he? Yeah. He took a boat to Tarshish, didn't he? Yeah. Big storm come. The captain of the ship and the others on there, they didn't know what to do. They cast lots. Who's the problem? God pointed to Jonah. The captain went to Jonah. What'd you do? You're the whole reason for this. We're going to all die. What Jonah tell him? You remember? Throw me overboard. You'll be all right. They finally did. Big fish swallowed him. Wasn't a whale. Might have been a whale. I don't know. It just said it was a big fish. A lot of people say it was a whale. A whale's big. Could have been a whale, but it's just a big fish. Swallowed him. How long was he in the whale's belly? Anybody remember? Three days. Three days, three nights. And the weeds were wrapping around his face. Can you imagine being down in the stomach of a big fish? Made that big fish sick, didn't he? <laughs> he told him up. <laughs> Tell you what, he started thinking down there in three yeah. days in the, in oh, the belly of a big fish. I'll bet. And then, and then God had the fish spit him out. Then he told him a second time. What did he tell him? Go to that great city, Nineveh. Nineveh. Yeah. Go to Preach. Nineveh. He went and he preached. <laughs> yeah. He's the sorriest preacher. He wasn't begging for revival. He didn't want to preach. And the greatest, the greatest, listen, the greatest revival and preaching service in the history of the world at Nineveh took place and everybody was saved. The king and everybody in that city and a sorry preacher preached. You know, you know why I think God did that? To show that God has to get the glory. Not Billy Graham, not Billy Sunday, not D.L. Moody, not a man on the face of this earth, but God only. Huh? Amen. Sometimes people give great evangelists too much credit. Too much credit. That's God. God. Billy Graham ain't never saved anybody. Neither had D.L. Moody. Neither had Gabriel Varga. That's me. It's God. The only one that ever saved anybody was God. Man. And he, the greatest revival that ever happened was preached by a sorry preacher. That one worth a nickel tried to run from God. And then after the whole city got saved, he didn't repent. He was mad. He was mad. <laughs> I knew he was going to do that, God. You, you so merciful and kind, you was going to save them people. He's mad about that. Boy, Can you think about a sorrier preacher than that Lord ever? Lord. Huh? He should be praised the Lord more than anybody. He should be. <laughs> that's, that's weird how people can be. Man, glory. Glory. Praise God and the Lord. Oh, my goodness. And he will, he will turn again and he will have compassion upon us. Well, glory, 19. Amen. He will subdue our iniquities. And now we'll cast all our sins into the depths of the sea. The the Buried sea. in the deepest sea. Yes, that's good enough. My sins are gone. Gone, gone. gone, 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 gone. Yes, my sins are gone. Buried in the deepest sea. Did you ever find that song in the hymnal? It ain't in our hymnal, huh? I'll find it on the internet. I'm going to find it. I'll play it for you on the internet. Deep as sea. Thou wilt perform the truth to Jacob and the mercy to Abraham, which thou hast sworn unto our fathers from the days of old. God's made a promise to us. He's made a covenant with us. If we repent, he'll save. Just like he did Abraham. Amen. Amen. The father of faith. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I'm so glad I'm saved. Oh, boy. Are you saved? Amen. Why don't you get saved if you don't know it, huh? Why don't you get saved out there, Internet? Why don't you get saved? Well, glory. Heavenly Father, thank you yes, for the closing of Micah. A little book. 
shows the goodness of God and the forgiveness of God and the mercy of God for those who repent, turn from their sins. You're out there in the viewing audience. You're here in church. God's got a hold of your heart. You haven't been saved yet, but you see you need to. Let's just pray that prayer with me here in church and out in the viewing audience. You believe Jesus died for you? The Bible says God, Christ died for our sins according to scriptures. He was buried. He rose again the third day according to scriptures. I acknowledge that. God saved April 4th, 1969. If you don't know that, if you don't have a day, get a day. Make it today, the 20th of December, 2022. Pray the sinner's prayer with me. Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you died for me. You shed your precious blood on Calvary's cross. Rose in the grave the third day best I know how with an honest heart I turn from my sins receive you as my Savior Amen. thank you for saving me right now right now amen yeah. and amen